welcome back to Currently Kent. It's a pretty cold day here in the studio and I've been working on this project for the last few weeks now and it has one purpose for me right now and that's to uh, benchmark using the Z390 platform uh, from Intel. Uh, I got three kids, a uh, wife, dog, cat, and guinea pigs inside there so uh, I've brought this machine outside as sort of a closable test bench of sorts. Even in the garage there still gets some particulate matter in the air. So the motherboard that is in the PC right now is the Z390 Maximus 11 gene and the processor is an Intel 9900K. The RAM that I'm using right now is a 2x8 kit of 3800 C14 from G-Skill and in the time that it's taken me to put this footage together for the video uh, I've got a different GPU in there so in some of the scenes uh, of me assembling this, you're going to see a different graphics card in there, which would be an Asus 1660 Super. However, now there is a Gigabyte 1080 Ti that'll be featured in the next video that's coming up, so stay tuned for that. This has been a really fun experience and really fun project, uh, so let's talk a little bit more about how it all came together. Starting off, the 9900K has to lose a few things. In order to make the best of this processor, I'm going to cool the die directly using the Rocket Cool D-Lid and Direct Die Kit. There are other methods to achieve the same results without using this kit, but I found that the kit takes the vast majority of the risk associated with removing the integrated heat spreader from the PCB and removing the stock Intel solder out of the equation. Unpacking the kit, you're provided with nearly everything you'll need. Start by lining the processor up with the markings on the base of the tool. Secure the top with the provided screws. Using the larger Allen key, begin tightening the screw to allow the pusher to loosen the integrated heat spreader from the PCB of the CPU. Here's what it looks like when the two are separated. Next up, it's time to clean the surfaces. I started with removing the adhesive, and you can see it there. It's the black ring that goes around the PCB. You want to use something hard enough to remove the adhesive, but soft enough to not scratch the PCB. And what I used here was a Dick's Sporting Goods gift card and it seemed to do the job pretty well. After that, the solder needs to come off. Included in the Rocket Cool kit is some Quicksilver. They go over how to do this in the tutorial and can be found on their website. Move on to the included Flitz polish to give the die a shiny surface. A small amount of the polish goes a really long way. In fact, what's included with the kit is probably enough to do about 10 CPUs. Moving on to the direct die frame installation. Rocket Cool recommends installing the CPU first before removing the Intel retention system. I'm going to use the backplate, so some tape to secure it to the board is recommended. Using the provided tool, the stock retention system comes off easily. Now the direct die frame goes on using the same tool that removed the Intel bracket. I'll be using this CPU block from Heatkiller, so now's the time to get the mounting kit for it installed. When I opened the package, I was really happy to see that they went with this spring-style mounting system because it takes a bit of the mounting pressure guessing game out of the equation. You just tighten the nuts from the kit until they stop. Here comes the liquid metal part. Make sure to thoroughly clean the surfaces before application with isopropyl alcohol. A thin, even layer works just fine here. You'll also want to get some of the liquid metal on the cooler surface as well. After that, the block goes on. And here we can take a look at it all before it goes inside the case. The 
the rest of the process is pretty straightforward from here. In fact, this is my first time trying out quick disconnects. Uh, these ones I've got here are from coolants and they're really pretty heavy so I mean the, the the weight when you hold it in your hand it's you can tell it's a quality product I mean weight is often a sign of reliability so I thought maybe we could have a little bit of a closer look at these things so basically it's two pieces and they uh, come apart kind of like a air compressor and one end of it here has the G and a quarter threads which go into uh, CPU blocks, GPU blocks, radiators and that kind of thing and then the other end has space to apply your tubing to it so uh, these ones actually are leak free. I can connect and disconnect these things a thousand times and not a drop will come out uh, of the coolant in between so they're really nice and I've attached them to the pump and reservoir combo on here so that way I can pull the tubes off, tuck them inside the case, put the panel on, close it up, and then when I want to come out and do some benchmarking or work on this, I can just take the panel off and take the tubes out of the case and connect them up to the pump and it's good to go. For right now though, I can't completely close the case because the graphics card that's in there now, the 1080 Ti, it's a good bit longer than the 16 Super that was in there initially. And that meant that I had to take the radiator and the fans and install them on the outside of the case, uh, which means that it technically isn't fully closable. That'll actually be sorted out in the video that's coming up next. So we'll see if I can get it back inside the case and have this thing be closable again. Taking advantage of the colder ambient temps during our winter here in Southern California has been Pretty cool for overclocking. I've even managed to get a stripped version of Windows from a friend, so shout out to Yaki from Discord. And while I'm on the subject of shout outs, there's a huge thanks in order to Midnight703 from Discord. He's been really helping me with a lot of this overclocking business. And for anyone from the overclocking Discord servers that I'm on, y'all are great. I really appreciate all your support through the last year and a half or so of learning how to overclock and work on computers and stuff. So thank you all for tuning in and we'll see you next time.